Okay, so the waiting room is turned off, so everyone should be able to join at will. Um, we've got the recording paused for the moment, and the YouTube live stream uh, should be up and running shortly. So I'll wait until 11 to press record then. Don't unmute. Okay, I'm doing a check. Can we make sure that everybody on the campuses as well as the remote link can hear us? Thumbs up. We if can you hear can. you in Duluth. Perfect. All right, Dean Wellage, I think we've got everybody here and connected, maybe some students joining um, from Zoom at home, but I think we can go ahead and get started whenever you're ready.
You're good. Welcome. Welcome everyone in Duluth, everyone in the Twin Cities, everyone joining us in Zoom, everyone joining us via the simulcast. Um, I am Linda Wellage and I'm honored to be the Dean of this great University of Minnesota College of Pharmacy. And welcome each of you to today's special um, ceremony, our white coat um, event. Before we get started, there are, is one quick housekeeping note. Throughout today's event, we will be taking screenshot images um, for use in our college communications, including our social media channels. If you'd rather not take part in these images, um, for those um, remotely, please turn your camera off. For those in the classrooms on either campus, I guess you can duck behind somebody else, but um, recognize um, our purpose in that we want to celebrate and share the news with everybody else in the world um, about our first year class. Allow me to begin by extending a warm welcome to all parents, family members, significant others and friends who are able to join us to celebrate and support our first year students, even if you are doing it remotely. I would also like to recognize our faculty, staff, preceptors, alumni, and current students who are with us today. These individuals are the ones that will educate, train, mentor, and support these students over the next four years. Thank you all for your commitment to our students. Many thanks also to the staff in our admissions and student services office who oversaw the admissions process and coordinated today's lovely event. Um, thank you for your great efforts. While we continue to adapt to the effects of a global pandemic and ponder our new way forward. The reason we are gathering for our white coat ceremony is unchanged from years past. Today, we will formally recognize the transition of our first year students formally into our doctor of pharmacy program. Over the past two weeks, the students have participated, which they can share with you later, in a course called Becoming a Pharmacist in preparation for joining the college and the profession as student pharmacists. At the college, we aim to prepare the best pharmacists in the country. And as such, this is not an easy program. As students, your success in the classroom will be evidenced by your commitment to excellence and willingness to persevere. Moreover, you'll have an opportunity to demonstrate your adaptability and resilience, both in the pandemic, as well as other times in healthcare and throughout your college career here. This next year in your journey will likely be stressful and challenging at times, but it is an essential step in the development of each of you as future pharmacists. Though we are unable to coat each of you in person today, I want to hear, um, I want you to hear and understand how amazing and worthy you are of this celebration. Your accomplishments to this point both in your undergrad, in your personal lives, and in your two weeks with us, are impressive. And they have already begun to shape you into the best pharmacists in the nation. At this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Tim Stratton, Interim Senior Associate Dean on our Duluth campus to provide additional remarks.
Today's white coat ceremony serves as the opportunity for you, student pharmacist, to thoughtfully and publicly express your commitment to professionalism in the company of your peers, family, partners, friends, pharmacy practitioners, and the faculty. By accepting your white coat, you will join a community of providers who share a commitment to improving the health and quality of life of others. You agree to be excellent in both the science and practice of pharmacy, to be compassionate, and to lead lives of honor. You assume the responsibility and accountability for the therapeutic outcomes and safety of drug therapy for your patients. You take on the mantle of caring, not only for patients, but about your patients. All of this can be accomplished only if you develop professional and respectful relationships with your student colleagues, our faculty and staff, your patients, their families, and other health professionals. Each year, the Century Motor Club generously sponsors the white coats for the incoming class of student pharmacists. Today we have Dr. Amy Joe Dicatano, uh, here to welcome students on behalf of the organization. Dr. DiGatano is a 2011 graduate of College of Pharmacy and is currently a clinical pharmacist at Mercy Hospital Unity Campus <coughs> down in Fridley, Minnesota. She has a special interest in helping patients with psychiatric and substance use disorders. Dr. DiGatano also enjoys volunteering with the College of Pharmacy, working with Pharmacy uh, D students, and is currently the president of the Century Motor Club. Please join me in welcoming Dr. DiCatano to provide welcoming remarks on behalf of the Century Motor Club. Thank you, Dr. Stratton, for the introduction, and thank you all for the opportunity to share this special occasion with you. I hope you are all able to take the time to really enjoy this moment with your families and with your new colleagues, and also to acknowledge the significance in your professional journey. Um, it's my pleasure to congratulate you on this step and to welcome you to the profession of pharmacy on behalf of the Century Mortar Club. The Century Mortar Club is a group of pharmacists, college alumni, friends of the college, and others in our community who all share a single aim, to support students at the College of Pharmacy, basically to support you. And over the Century Mortar Club's 50 plus year history, we have served students in a variety of capacities, but none have been more valuable than connecting students with practicing pharmacists and others in our community, uh, helping you to really explore career opportunities, find mentors, or just to meet others with shared interests and different perspectives. Pretty soon here, you're gonna find yourself in a whirlwind of school activities, not just classes, but student organizations, professional meetings, internships, rotations, and all sorts of extracurricular projects that you have just started to dream up. And our hope for you is that you embrace all of the challenges of the coming year with passion, and that you remember with this white coat comes an entire community of pharmacists, Century Mortar Club members and others, friends and family who are here to support you on your journey. So once again, on behalf of the Century Mortar Club, congratulations on this new beginning and welcome to our shared pharmacy community. Thank you, Dr. Digitano. I'd next like to uh, introduce uh, Kira White. Kira is a third year pharmacy student from Plymouth, Minnesota. She received her bachelor's degree in chemistry from Concordia College in Moorhead in 2019. Throughout her time as a pharmacy student, she has been involved in Phi Lambda Sigma, the Pharmacy Leadership Society, the Minnesota Pharmacy Student Alliance, known to our students as MPSA, the college's Honor Council and College Board. Kira is pursuing the leadership emphasis area and is the College Board President this year. Please join me in welcoming Kira to provide welcoming remarks on behalf of our current students. Thank you, Dr. Stratton. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone, and a special welcome to the future pharmacists of the class of 2025. My name is Kira White, and I'm the current president of College Board, which serves as our student government body in the College of Pharmacy. 
Today, as you receive your white coats, you officially begin your journey as student pharmacists. So I wanted to provide you all with some words of encouragement and welcome you to the family. We at the College of Pharmacy call ourselves a family because it is what it sounds like, your pharmacy family. We are all here to help support one another like family on your journey through this program. You have chosen an incredible school and profession and I'm honored to be part of the special day with you all. As you transition into this exciting new phase of your lives, it's important to take a moment to recognize the uniqueness of each one of you and your classmates. Everyone had a different path to get here today, has a different background with diverse interests, but you all have one thing in common, your interest and passion for pharmacy. Throughout your experience here at the College of Pharmacy, you will encounter numerous opportunities in a wide variety of areas. I challenge you to seek out those opportunities that interest you and use your strengths to get involved in the areas that you're passionate about. If you haven't heard this already, pharmacy is a very small world. So getting involved in making connections with your colleagues is crucial, a crucial part of your experience as a student. As pharmacists, we commit to being lifelong learners, but you only get four years to be a student pharmacist. So my advice to you would be to take advantage of this short time and pack in as much learning as you can inside and outside of the classroom. Explore things that you're passionate about and push yourself outside of your comfort zone. You may even discover some new strengths and passion along the way. Although you're beginning a rigorous program, it's important to make sure that you take some time for yourself too. Take a night off studying every once in a while because it's really unrealistic to be studying every spare minute of your day. It's important to have some fun too. Take advantage of any social events put on by student organizations and go out of your way to get to know students in the other classes and on the other campus too. We have some pretty amazing people here at the College of Pharmacy. As you begin this next chapter of your lives as student pharmacists, take a minute to soak in and really remember this day. Remember the excitement that you feel and make sure to take that with you as you continue through this program. Take advantage of your time as a student to explore your passions and interests and make as many connections as you can. Enjoy the journey with your family. It will go by faster than you think. I'm so excited to see everything that your class will do during your time here at the college and beyond. Congratulations, future pharmacists of the class of 2025, and welcome to the family. Thank you so much, Kira. I now have the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker. <clears throat> Dr. Tracy Anderson Haig is a clinical pharmacy specialist in kidney transplantation at Hennepin Healthcare and a clinical assistant professor at the University of Minnesota College of Pharmacy. Dr. Anderson Haig is responsible for the care of both inpatient and ambulatory kidney transplant recipients and donors. In addition to her patient care activities, Tracy is the residency program director of the pharmacy residency program in solid organ transplant and a preceptor for pharmacy students in their advanced practice experiences. In 2019, Dr. Anderson Haig was one of three pharmacists nationally recognized with a master preceptor distinction by the American Association of Colleges of Pharmacy. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Anderson Haig uh, to provide our keynote address. Thank you so much for the kind introduction and it is truly my honor to be joining all of you today. Please let me welcome the class of 2025. It's your white coat ceremony. The beginning of a journey that will carry you to your future, committed to the profession of pharmacy. While that white coat symbolizes respect and responsibility, to me, it also represents opportunity. As you are coded in a few short minutes, I really want you to consider the magnitude of this. The opportunity that you've been given just with acceptance into this prestigious professional program, the ultimate opportunity to become a pharmacist, an essential and indispensable member of the healthcare team. So we'll talk a lot about being a professional. What makes someone a professional? I'm sure you can all think of people in professional positions who have not been really professional whether it's poor customer service, questionable character or integrity, a rotten attitude. One of my favorite quotes is, professionalism is not the job you do, it's how you do the job. Putting on a white coat today and going through the motions of taking care of a patient, 
does not make you a professional. And this applies not only to you in patient care, but throughout your student experience as well. Professionalism is how you approach your coursework, your classmates, faculty, and patients, and how you prioritize your development, your academics, and community experiences. In the words of Alistair Cook, a professional is a person who can do their best at a time when they don't particularly feel like it. I'd like to share a story from my practice that I think highlights this concept. It's about Don. I saw Don on an annual basis in transplant clinic. Don had a devil of a time with his blood pressure and often called the clinic wanting to speak with me to get advice on his medications. One Friday, he called and had issues with leg swelling and it was determined he needed some water pills. I contacted the clinic physician who agreed with my recommendation and the coordinator was to call in a prescription. <clears throat> Later that evening, I was out for dinner with my husband and my cell phone rang, and the caller ID said it was Don. Many questions entered my mind, including how did he get my cell phone number? Should I answer? I'm off, I'm on a date. But the professional in me said, pick it up. And I picked it up. No one had called in Don's prescription. So having received the order from the physician earlier in the day, I called in his prescription for a water pill at 7 p.m. to his local pharmacy. On another occasion, I got a call from Don's local hospital while on my way home from work. Do I pick up? I've already put in well over 10 hours today. And I picked up. Don had had a colonoscopy earlier in the day and had an incidental perforation of his colon, which was a complication that required him needing emergent surgery. When Don woke up, he immediately instructed his floor nurse to call me and refused any medicines, including pain medication, until she had reviewed all of his orders with me. So there I was at 5 p.m. on a Thursday in rush hour traffic reviewing Don's medication list. This guy has routinely had impeccable timing. In between our annual visits and these urgent issues, Don would send me postcards from his senior bus tours and notes along with prior authorization insurance requests or interesting news articles about transplant or immunosuppression. He would call me with updates on his blood pressure and we would gab about the weather or what he had eaten at the state fair. I knew each time I picked up, it would be at least 20 minutes, but I still picked up no matter how busy I was because it was the right thing to do. You never know what a patient might need. Each year, I also receive a Christmas card from Don. And one year I noticed on the bottom, they were numbered. I was number 20 of 27. I, his pharmacist, had made this short list. I remember feeling pretty proud and a bit humbled. On January 20th at 7.10 in the morning, I received a call from Don's local hospital. I saw the caller ID and thought, oh, what now? At 7 in the morning, I suppose a winter respiratory infection or something. I picked up and a nurse asked if I was Tracy. She said she had a patient of mine in the emergency room and proceeded to tell me that Don's roommate had asked that she call me to let me know that Don had experienced a severe hemorrhagic stroke and that his family had decided to pursue comfort cares he would likely not last long. I thanked her for the phone call and hung up and Don passed away later that afternoon. Because Don was in a study with me, I needed information on all hospitalizations and deaths and I requested his emergency room records. There were two documented notes. The first read, contacted Don's brother, Bob, given grave prognosis and patient's wishes, the plan is to offer comfort cares. The second note read, called Tracy, the patient's transplant pharmacist, to inform her of the patient's prognosis. She was appreciative of the call. Two people were notified of this catastrophic medical event, his brother and his pharmacist. I was humbled and heartbroken. I felt compelled to attend Don's funeral. I walked in and I asked the funeral director if he could point me to Don's niece, who I knew had been his kidney donor. I introduced myself to her and tears filled her eyes and she said, you're Tracy. She ran to get her mother, who was Don's sister, who also immediately knew who Tracy was. You're Don's pharmacist. Don's brother, Bob, approached me and asked if I would join the processional and sit up front with their family. They felt Don would want me to be with them. Humboldt was no longer adequate to describe my feelings. On my drive home that day, I did a lot of reflecting on why I was so important to Don. I was just his pharmacist. I was just doing my job. I didn't feel that I had gone above and beyond. In fact, during my most memorable interactions with Don, I wasn't even wearing a white coat. I just did what I felt I should do and was trained right here to do. 
I cared for the patient. I helped with his drug therapy needs. I listened, I acted. I combined the science of pharmacy with the art of caring. But now when I reflect on this years later, I can say I was a professional. It's so thrilling for me to think of the opportunity that awaits all of you to experience situations just like this. The gratitude from a patient or their family or a provider or a healthcare team member that you've helped is beyond comprehension. And professional students of the class of 2020, this starts now. It's time to don that coat. And the pun is fully intended here. Make a commitment to yourself, a professional student, and treat all patients and learning opportunities like Don to optimize your experience in this college as a pharmacist, and as of right now, that white coat. Embrace true professionalism, act with integrity, take responsibility and ownership, commit yourself to this process, provide exceptional care, dedicate yourself to that excellence. Don the heck out of that white coat with pride. And you'll learn quickly that the more you put in, the greater your reward. You get back what you give, and I'd argue with experience to back me, you'll get far more back. I wish you the best of luck and much success as you embark on your student pharmacist adventure. And I really hope to walk along with you at some point along the way. Thank you, Dean Wellage, and I'll turn the program back to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Anderson Haig, for the inspiring, motivating speech. Um, you, may, you are, we are proud of you as one of our alums and as a pharmacist. And now, on the most exciting part of our ceremony, I would like to introduce Dr. Laura Palumbi and Dr. Jason Barron, course directors in Becoming a Pharmacist course, um, as all of you students know. Um, they will present our students today. Thank you, Dean Wellich. As we read the names, we will also announce if students have family members or pharmacists. Pharmacy is a small world, as you know, so it's exciting to celebrate when students follow a family member's path into the profession. And we will begin with our names. Patrick Acton. Junia Adafaranye, Tesneem Alnadoff, Connor Allen, Alessandro Amores, Mead Avery, Angelo Azuzu, Megan Bano, Ashley Theory, Densoye Valete, Kendra Berry, Densoye Valete. Julia Behrens, to be coded by her father, Dan Behrens. Jeffrey Brown. Hayden Butzloff. Estrella Calderon. Emma Carlberg. Madison Chapman. Kelly Chai, Aubrey Clark, Chai, 
sorry, I think we have an audio issue. I don't think we can hear Duluth right now. Dr. Palumbi, please hold for just a sec. I think that we are back on. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. So I have Rachel Cohen. Cody Coleman. Marilyn Cornell. David Dahl. Mai Day. Saloni Desai, Brenna Dolny, Adil Duale, Ty Eater, Isra El Khatib. Hunter Eldeen, Joshua Erickson. Nicholas Evenson. Caitlin France. Carly Gamrath to have been coded by her grandfather, Gerald Gamrath. Lauren Gansky to have been coded by her father, Mike Gansky. Bashir Galetto. Salamavi Germachu. Diera Gresham. Carly Hallen. Katarina Hansen. Marisa Harley, Andy Hahn, Aaron Hess, Justine Higgins, Tui Ho, Tiffany Horshin, Anna Hong, Omar Idis, Brandon Jillick, Kara Johnson, Charles Jones, David Kabuye, David Cartona, Jimwa Kang. Alyssa Plancher, Matthew Noel, to have been coded by his father and fellow Minnesota alum, Rick Noel. Amanda Lackey, Aubrey Lahr, Alex Larson, Shang Li, Emily Ledger, Catherine Lim, Annie Lindgren, Stephanie Lindquist, Trevor Lindsay. Tatiana Labuzu, Shanice Lorenz, Maxwell Marciniak, Brooklyn Mason, Margaret Matson, Elise Moore, Jimmy Morales. 
Emma Morse. Vanessa Nacy. Taja Nihot. Lindsay Nelson. Mian Nguyen. Thao Nguyen. Valerie Nguyen. V Nguyen. Grace Kachka. Vanessa Orcutt. Sandra Owusu. Duck Palm. Sarah Pinkley. Kaylee Pribno. Damon Prow. Madeline Rickman. Alyssa Ruberg. Maddie Shaver. Sophia Serafimov. Trevor Sheldon. Rocky Shiu. Anna Skubal. Amanda Smith. Sarah Smith. Jacob Spade. Samantha St. Jacques. Emily Streit. Michaela Stum. T. Ta. Anthony Tadman. Tu Tao. Lauren Towley. Han Tran. Juliana Untura. Kachua Vang. Jacob Vang. Jinu Vang. Juom Vang. Beth Flieger. Jessica Vu. Gavin Walsh. Rayleigh Walls. Allison Warming. Mariah Weiss. Elizabeth Welter. Christiana Winch. Nanaboni Yadata. Emily Young. Gao Yang. Emmy Young. King Yang. Lelia Yang. Jasmine Zaidi. Clara Zelikman. Dina Zhang. Back to you, Dean Wellage. Thank you, Dr. Palumbi and Dr. Varen. Now we've come to the focal point of this event, officially presenting the class with white coats to symbolize their transition as student pharmacists. Attendees who are connected via Zoom, we encourage you to adjust your settings to gallery view 
so that you can see our students on the screen. Students in the class of 2025, if you're connecting, please turn on your video, but remain muted in Zoom. All students, whether on the Duluth campus, the Twin City campus, or in Zoom, please stand in your spaces at your home or wherever you are or on campus. One benefit of hosting our ceremony virtually is that family members and supporters are able to participate. And so if you will be coding a student um, remotely, um, please stand as you're able. Students, regardless of your location, if you have a friend, family member, partner, roommate, other helper present, and so those in the classrooms, maybe it's your neighbor um, at your table, um, you can hand your coat, if you wish, to that person. And coders are gonna stand behind the student and hold the coat open and help them put their arms into the coat. Another, and um, then up to their shoulders. Students without a coder or who would prefer to coat themselves, please feel free to do so. Please proceed with your coatings. Wow, look at our sea of white coats and all of our new student garments. <laughs> <laughs> and all you, you can now be seated. Some of you may feel a little disappointed in not having someone, the dean or someone else in the College of Pharmacy, coat you. I'm standing before you to not feel disappointed. Um, because in the past, and you can ask upperclassmen, this has led to very embarrassing situations. Tall people, because I'm fairly short, getting twisted in their white coat or me having to jump to try to get it on, or um, the famous what we call chicken wings, and it's where the individual getting coated makes their, um, bends their arms at the elbow and makes it very difficult to get the code on by the coder. Um, and so it's not about who coats you. It's about the symbolism of the coat, as you heard earlier today. And I want you all to settle in um, and enjoy the rest of today's ceremony. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Randy Seifer, the Associate Dean for Student and Professional Affairs, who's going to present the portrait of the class. Dr. Seifer. Thank you, Dean Lullage. Uh, congratulations everyone on entering our profession. I know that you've spent the last two weeks together and over the next months and years, you're going to spend much more time together getting to know one another, both individually and as members of this incoming class. As a class family, you will come to rely on each other as you take the steps towards achieving your pharmacy degree. You'll serve as sounding boards, cheerleaders, supporters, confidence, and colleagues. And in that spirit, I thought we should take a little time this afternoon to, to sketch for you a portrait of the class of 2025, a group snatch, snapshot, if you will. You represent 11 states, 
with nearly 100 of you coming from Minnesota and also a dozen from across the border in Wisconsin. Students also join us from states across the country, from California to New Hampshire and everywhere in between. 21, 21 of you were born in other countries, including Ghana, Thailand, Ukraine, and China, just to name a few. You have majored in nearly 30 disciplines. A number of you majored in the sciences, such as biochemistry, biology, chemistry, and microbiology. But many of you have majored in other fields, such as French, creative writing, engineering, and communications. Three of you enter the program with an advanced degree already completed. Talk about a really well-rounded education uh, and group. You have attended over 50 institutions of higher education, including large public research universities, small pop, private colleges, community colleges, and everything in between. You have attended such colleges in all corners of the United States and around the world. You have attended state systems, including four of the five University of Minnesota campuses and seven of the University of Wisconsin campuses, liberal arts colleges such as Bethel, Hamlin, and St. Kate's, and other schools across the country such as Morningside College, Michigan Tech, and the University of North Dakota, and Johns Hopkins University. You are first-generation college students and multi-generation legacies. You are an accomplished and well-prepared cohort. You've received numerous awards and honors. Several of you have also published articles in journals. You've been busy prior to matriculating into the College of Pharmacy. You've held positions such as pharmacy technician, analytical chemist, bar manager, delivery driver, respiratory therapist, nanny, personal care attendant, and, and many more. Some of you have worked at candy companies, cookie shops, and bakeries. So we look forward to some really excellent potlucks. Collectively as a class, you've dedicated over 100,000 hours to volunteer and extracurricular activities. Wow, uh, you have you've dedicated your free time to organizations such as student organizations, elementary schools, hospitals and clinics, cultural organizations, nonprofit organizations, music ensembles, religious organizations, and intramural club and varsity sports team. I have talked about the rich diversity that you bring to the College of Pharmacy, but one thing that you all have in common is that you are the University of Minnesota College of Pharmacy's class of 2025. You have a lot to offer each other, the College of Pharmacy and the profession of pharmacy. It is my honor and privilege to have you in my profession and to one day soon call you my colleague. You have chosen our college pharmacy for your professional journey. And, and uh, now I will turn this back over to uh, Dr. Varen. Dr. Varen, I think we need you to unmute. Hold on, help is on the way. Oh, you're perfect now. <laughs> Just walking into the room. Oh, it's, someone's leading the room in Zoom. Oh, okay. That's what it is. Yeah. <clears throat> well, thank you and for your patience. And uh, so so nice to see all of these, these white coats both here and on the Twin Cities. First of all, let me echo the thoughts of, of Dean Linda Wellage uh, from earlier and say greetings and thank you to the family and friends who are able to join us today to support our student pharmacists. Your continued support is absolutely critical to their success as they embark on their journey of education and experience over the next um, uh, three years and nine months. That sounds better than four years, doesn't it? I thought so. Student pharmacists, as Dr. Palumbi and I remarked on day one of becoming a pharmacist, you are now professionals in training. I am happy to congratulate you 
and welcome you formally to the profession of pharmacy and to our family. Over the last two weeks, we've covered a large number of areas that will help you navigate the remainder of your education and create the basis that you will build upon and carry with you for the balance of your professional careers. We've discussed the importance of the pharmacist patient care process and that pharmacists are the medication expert on the healthcare team. We've discussed public health and underserved populations to better understand the challenges our communities may face and the solutions pharmacist care can provide. We've learned about our individual strengths and how to better care for ourselves as well as others. We've heard from many faculty about the curricular portion of your education, such as medicinal chemistry, pharmaceutics, health systems, and pharmacy practice. During the remainder of this course, you'll hear from dozens of pharmacists that volunteer their time to discuss leadership, career options, engaging in the profession, and the fact that pharmacists are people too. And as such, we need to help, we may need help to navigate life's rough spots, recognizing when and how to seek out support when we need it. Importantly, you got to know the community of fellow student pharmacists that you'll be spending the majority of your waking hours with during your time at the College of Pharmacy. As in any profession, pharmacy requires a code of ethics, a contract of sorts that provides guidance on conduct and creates a framework of professional identity and trust between professionals, the public, and the clients of our services, our patients. Family and friends, this year, this class of student pharmacists discussed the Pledge of Professionalism, what it means to them, how it reflects their values and those of the college, the profession, and how these words will provide guidance throughout their educational and professional career. It's my distinct pleasure to invite four student pharmacists to lead the recitation of the pledge. Kaylin France and Emma Carlberg from the Duluth campus and Alessandro Miguel Amores and King Yang from the Twin Cities. Kaylin, take it away. Thank you, Dr. Varon. Classmates, please stand and listen along as we read the pledge out loud. We'll ask you to join in the closing statement, which can be found on the screen and linked in the email invitation. As a student of pharmacy, I believe there is a need to build and reinforce a professional identity founded in integrity, ethical behavior, and honor. This development, a vital process in my education, will help ensure that I am true to the professional relationship I establish between myself and society as I become a member of the pharmacy community. Integrity must be an essential part of my everyday life, and I must practice pharmacy with honesty and commitment to service. To accomplish this goal of professional development, I, as a student of pharmacy, should develop a sense of loyalty and duty to the profession of pharmacy by being a builder of community one able and willing to contribute to the well-being of others and one who enthusiastically accepts the responsibility and accountability for membership in the profession. Foster professional competency through the lifelong learning. I must strive for high ideals, teamwork and unity within the profession in order to support op optimal patient care. Support my colleagues by actively encouraging personal commitment to the oath of amenities and a code of ethics as set forth by the profession. Incorporate into my life and practice dedication to excellence. This will require an ongoing reassessment of personal and professional values. Maintain the highest ideals and professional attributes to ensure and facilitate the co covenantal relationship required of the pharmaceutical caregiver. Class of 2025, Please recite the final statement aloud with us as a testament to our pledge. The profession, the profession of, pharmacy of pharmacy is one is that demands adherence to a set of rigid ethical, ethical standards. standards. These, These high, high ideals, ideals are necessary, necessary to ensure the quality of care extended to the patients I serve. 
As, As a, a student, student of pharmacy, pharmacy, I believe this, I believe this does, does not start with start graduation. graduation. Rather, Rather, it begins with my membership with my in this professional, in this professional college, college community. community. Therefore, Therefore, I must strive, I must strive to, uphold to uphold these standards, standards as I advance I toward full membership in the profession of pharmacy. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin, Emma, Alessandro, King, and all students for affirming this important commitment to our profession. Before we conclude, and you can have a seat if you'd like, I would like to again thank the Century Mortar Club for their support in providing the white coats and to thank our speakers and advisors, Dr. Amy Jo Digatano, Kara White, Dr. Tracy Anderson Haig, Drs. Palumbi and Barron, and Dean Stratton and Cypher. Every year, we look forward to the opportunity to celebrate our new student pharmacists, all of you, and welcome you as members to our community and our family. Our environment continues to be unusual this year. And I know there is a collective disappointment in not being able to come together fully in person for these activities. However, we are all still grateful for the opportunity to acknowledge the hard work, incredible achievements and new beginnings of your class. Congratulations, class of 2025. Thank you, thank you all for celebrating the class of 2025 in this milestone. Have a wonderful afternoon and please celebrate safely. Thank you all. That's all right. So, um, do you all want to head over to the plaza outside of the college for a group picture? Raise your hand. All right, so let's uh, give me about three minutes to pack up and we'll head on over there and uh, we'll get a picture. I will be taking, for those that don't want to do it today, I will be setting up a formal photo um, for the entire class on one of your lab days so everybody that can participate, whether they're on Zoom or not. So, um, And I will also make a trip up to Duluth to do the same thing. So in Duluth students will head outside as well and we'll also arrange for your formal picture. So, um, so let's get ready to go and then we're gonna head outside